The number of COVID-19 cases continues to rise globally and right here in Guyana. Therefore, we encourage everyone to practice social distancing. Wear a mask if you have to leave your homes and wash your hands thoroughly and frequently as we all strive to stop the spread of the virus. Welcome to InfoHub for Monday, June 1. Thanks for joining us. Chief Executive Officer of the National COVID-19 Task Force, Joseph Harmon, on Saturday dispelled rumors of a total national lockdown. Anara Khan has her first story. There is a rumor out there that there's going to be a complete lockdown in Guyana from next week. This rumor is forcing people to do panic buying and it's creating unnecessary crowds in our marketplaces and in places where people have to shop. I want to make this very clear that the National Corona Task Force has not considered a national lockdown. What we have before us is a consideration for the extension of the current measures beyond the 3rd of June. The NCTF CEO called on Guyanese to remain calm and continue to practice the guidelines set out by the Ministry of Public Health. I therefore call on all Guyanese to observe the guidelines of social distancing, washing of hands, wearing of masks in the public, and particularly to what is gazetted in the orders as essential services. Guyana recorded its first COVID-19 case in March, and since then, the government through the NCTF has been working assiduously to flatten the curve. Working hours have been reduced, a curfew has been implemented, and only essential services have been allowed to operate. For InfoHub, Anara Khan. Three more persons have recovered from the coronavirus, taking the total number of recoveries to 70. However, more still needs to be done to flatten that curve. Here now is Delicia Haynes with an update. Over the weekend, three new coronavirus cases have been confirmed, bringing the new total of confirmed cases to 153. Of these, 70 have recovered as of Sunday, May 31, with 71 remaining active. Sadly, a 12th death was recorded on Saturday. Dead is 87-year-old Damon John, who was a resident of the Palms Geriatric Home. Meanwhile, Guyana joined the rest of the world on Sunday in celebrating World No Tobacco Day under the theme Protecting Youth from Industry Manipulation and Preventing Them from Tobacco and Nicotine Use. The Ministry of Public Health used this opportunity to zero in on the harmful effects of COVID-19 in a smoker's body and encouraged smokers to quit. The youth population has been targeted in this regard given that data shows more youth using tobacco products and in Guyana, they are among the larger number of positive COVID-19 cases. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Shamdia Pasad explains. As we can see from the statistics, our males continue to be the ones most affected by COVID-19. And contrary to popular Guyanese belief that COVID-19 is a virus that mainly affects the elderly, our statistics continue to show us that the young now constitute the most vulnerable. For InfoHub, Delicia Haynes. Now for an update on the ongoing national ballot recount. The Ghana Elections Commission today continued discussions on the issue of unstamped ballots. According to Public Relations Officer Yolanda Ward, an unstamped ballot falls under rejected ballots and therefore the matter is engaging the attention of the GCOM chair. The matter, she noted, directly affects the votes of the disciplined services. The ballots were to be stamped at the respective polling stations where the servicemen and women would have initially voted 10 days prior to March 2. In the meantime, GCOM is confident in being able to complete the initial ballot recount before the new completion date of June 13. Up to news time, Ward said that 1,741 ballot boxes were counted out of the total 2,339. Additionally, seven of the ten regions have been completed, with Region 5 to be certified on Monday. The incomplete regions are 4, 8 and 10. Meanwhile, GCOM's Commissioner Vincent Alexander believes that investigations into alleged electoral fraud should not be feared by those who claim to have won the March 2 elections. Details in this Isaiah Braffitt report. 
His allegations are that hundreds voted but were not in the country, dead persons voted on stamped ballots and missing oath of identity, among others. Only recently, it was disclosed that the names of 600 persons who are alleged to have voted but were not in a jurisdiction were submitted to GCOM. That information was then submitted to the chief immigration officer. Alexander is of the view that if the opposition is claiming to have won the elections, then they should have no issue with investigations into the matter of electoral fraud. If one is confident that nothing untoward would have occurred, I think it's in one's interest to expose these accusations to scrutiny so that your own disposition of confidence could be reinforced and ascertained. However, leaders of the People's Progressive Party have threatened to file court action should GCOM investigate the claims. Commissioner Alexander posited that it was the PPP who advocated for transparency before the recount process began and are now finding ways to prevent investigations into matters raised. Transparency has been interpreted to mean that people must know all that's happening. Let's broadcast it, tabulation, and all of that. What is occurring in terms of what AP and UAFC has done can enhance that process of transparency. Let's see and know everything. But the advocates of transparency have now found other terms <laughs> to argue that these things should not occur. Nevertheless, a list of names of persons who are alleged to have voted on Elections Day but were out of the jurisdiction was submitted to the GCOM chairperson by the Chief Immigration Officer. Isaiah Braffitt for InfoHub. More news is after the break. Stay with us. Jamaica with a message from my people we don't know when COVID-19 will go so for now better stay at home oh we don't know so let we try and cope sanitize our users soap oh I won't stop and don't you stop responsibility is what you've got to self-preserve the health Hygiene, we need to all adapt. I won't stop, don't you stop. Stay away from crowds, cause it's way too pop. We all should stay three feet away. And in time, we make this virus stop. This is a message from Tamika Marshall and the Ministry of Public Health in collaboration with PAHO WHO. Thanks for staying with us. The Ghana Trade Union Congress is lending its voice to the ongoing national recount of the votes cast at the March 2 general and regional elections. It states that the process should not be trampled upon by any local or international force. More in this report. Veteran trade unionist and general secretary of the GTUC Lincoln Lewis said Sunday that the recount process undertaken by the Ghana Elections Commission is being done in the interest of all of Ghana and should not be treated lightly. He had met with journalists to speak specifically on behalf of Ghana's working class, who he said is caught between the rise and tension of the electoral process. We must be guided not by emotions and self-interest, but by the rule of law and national interest. This recount is governed by gazetted order of Fort Me. GCOM must be allowed to function within the scope of the law that gathers that governs its operation. No more, no less. According to the General Secretary, the electoral issue, which is likely to impact the lives of all workers, remains at the core of concern of the labor movement, which fought to secure local governance and the right of every worker or individual to participate and have their vote counted. One man, one vote. I say one eligible man, one vote, not a missing man or woman that is not, that is one who never existed, deceased or is absent, or is absent from the jurisdiction. One valid vote 
correctly stamped and identified against a valid identity number or affidavit. Lewis said the 2020 election will decide which group will manage the oil and gas revenues, the most significant economic platform of these times. He said the GTUC is concerned about the equitable distribution of these resources to the benefit of the working class of Guyana, and as such, the true will of the people must be represented. For InfoHub, Alexis Rodney. Let's tell you now that the Ghana Water Incorporated is seeking to establish additional wells in several communities across the country as it accelerates efforts to ensure that every household has access to portable water. During his discussion on 104.1 Guyana Light FM recently, Managing Director of GWI, Dr. Richard Van West Charles, said with support from the Central Housing and Planning Authority, Two wells will be established at farm on the east bank of the Marara. With the new rig that we have, we're preparing uh, um, as soon as the pipes are able to cross from Brazil um, to drill a well in Firish. Persons residing in Port Kaituma in the Barima Waini region will benefit from the establishment of a rig as GWI continues to expand its services. We are moving apace and trying to ensure that all of our citizens uh, indeed would have access uh, to water, um, not only from a COVID standpoint, yeah. but from a sustainable livelihood perspective. To date, some 48 wells were successfully drilled under the coalition administration. Pointing to the benefits, Dr. Van West Charles said that if these projects were not accomplished, today Guyana would have been in a difficult state since water is needed during the COVID-19 pandemic. The administration took this very seriously. Um, we were supported, GWI, by the government of Guyana, together with the resources that we have uh, mobilized and the contributions made by customers, and hence we are in a better place. Um, and this is a, a good foresight uh, brought to Guyana by the administration um, as we move forward. For InfoHub, I am Kellon Rover. Here now is a public service announcement on the Agriculture Ministry's Kitchen Garden Initiative. Refreshing. In response to the coronavirus pandemic, the Ministry of Agriculture has launched its COVID-19 Relief Kitchen Garden Initiative. For the past two weeks, DPI has had the pleasure of taking a look at some of these kitchen gardens. Hello everyone, my name is Gavin Lewis and I'm here with Dr. Victor Allen in his marvelous and fruitful kitchen garden. All you have to do is join the Ministry of Agriculture's COVID-19 Relief Kitchen Garden Initiative. Now this initiative was launched by the Rural Affairs Secretariat of the Agricultural Ministry to promote healthier eating. Forms can be uplifted at the Ministry's head office on Regent Street or at their regional agricultural offices or at any of your neighborhood democratic councils. Forms are also available on the Ministry's website as well as its Facebook page. Now remember, registration ends on June 6th, so hurry up, sign up, and happy planting. Remember to do your part to ensure that you do not put yourself at risk during this time. If you have a cough, fever, or difficulty breathing, please seek medical care early, but call that hotline first. That's all for today. Connect with us on our social media platforms, including WhatsApp, Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram, as we bring you the latest and important news related to COVID-19 and much more. You can also subscribe to our website, dpi.gov.gy. Your bridge report is up next. Have a safe day. Goodbye for now. <music>